There was a man in a particular place, all the time worried and tensed, very tensed. So he couldn't smile, even his daily work, you know, the face and the, uh, the way he appears to be really very rigid because he was terribly afraid of something which he couldn't express maybe. And all the time looked very worried. So they changed his name, even in the company where he worked and his colleagues and the people of locality, they did not call him by his name. They changed the name Mr. Warrior. Not Warrior, but Mr. Warrior. So, how are you, Mr. Warrior? He wouldn't say anything. Are you going for work today, Mr. Warrior? So every time they began to address him, and he felt all the more very bad. And now, one day, when he came to the company to work, they found him very excited, exuberant, overjoyed. And the face looked really radiant, you know, very bright. And the way he began to do things was, you know, something, you know, very encouraging for the others. And, you know, he would go on, come on, don't worry, come on, don't worry, don't be afraid. The man was terribly afraid till so far. Now encouraged the others and has become very, very brightened up and very, you know, joyous. So some of them who never expressed their fear, some of them who never showed it outside, want to know what's the secret because this man showed it outside that he was under fear and anxiety and worry and it's very evident now manifested in many ways in his work and other places whereas others did not they covered it up but they suffered within so in the free time one of them when it asked see um, if you don't mind no i do have some problem i do have fears and anxiety but i could not show it outside for fear of human respect what were this thing me but you were a man who you know outright showed that you are worried and so tense and what not over the years now but now today you become so happy what is a miracle so did you go for a retreat or did you go for something else and what not all questions came i said nothing then what then he said i found an event management group you know, event management for your marriage and, you know, functions that are event management group. I hope I am right. Yes or no? So they will manage the decoration, they will manage the stage, they will manage the computing, they will manage, arrange the chairs, they will manage the catering, everything. This is a package. So he said, I met a particular event management group and they had a package. And the other man, what is a package? Oh, very interesting. There was a 10,000 rupee package, 20,000 rupee package, 50,000 rupee package, 1 lakh rupee package. So I took the lowest one. So what's the package? You have to pay 10,000 rupees every month. Then what? Oh, this is something special. This event management is something special. They got other things, but they got one speciality. What is that? If you take this package of 10,000, of course 50,000 you can. The interesting part is that if you tend to be worried, when you get up in the morning, you ring up to them and you say, you feel like crying, they will cry for you. Are you listening? <laughs> okay. If you feel like hitting your wife or more than hitting, shouting bad words and yell at your wife, you ring up to them, I feel like shouting these words to my wife, they will shout at their wife all the bad words you want to speak. Okay. You want to sit down very gloomy for half an hour and you don't feel like, you know, doing any work and you feel rejected and you know, dejected and depressed. And you say, I feel dejected, depressed, and so they will sit for half an hour or one hour for your sake. So that's a kind of manage, very strange management. And the man asked him, let me ask you something. First of all, I know more than your worry within yourself, you had no money at all. I know you used to borrow from us. Very often when it comes to the end of the month, you would get money from us to, for your provision. And more than that, you would always say you could not pay fees for your children at all. And several times I was sent away from the school and also from the college because, you know, they were not paying the fees and the college authorities could not manage that. And you gave a lot of excuses and you couldn't manage. So, you, man that you were could not even pay the fees for your children, did not have even the sufficient money. How did you manage to take up 10,000 rupee packet? That means you had to pay 10,000 rupees every month. So, how do you find that? He said, that's very simple. That is their worry. I know very understood. <laughs> so that is not why, because every worry is given to them. Even to make the payment, you know, is given to them. So why should I worry? What we're trying to say, this is what perhaps I do not know, maybe a different way, what the Lord says, cast, what's the next word? 
cast your anxieties or all your anxieties. Not sure. It is not a lesson, nothing else, but that's analyze of a word is very power, powerful, you know, that every word. If you miss a word, you know, judgment can go wrong, you know that, no? When a judge makes a judgment, one word enough that it can twist the entire, you know, destiny of a person. So therefore, cast your anxieties or cast all your anxieties. No idea. All your anxieties, so don't keep anything. Cast all your anxieties on the Lord for He cares for you. It is because He cares for you, you must throw everything to Him. Let that be the other way too. Okay, shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But that is not the point that we exactly want to share, but more than that, something that we do. So as we said in prayer in the beginning, including me and you, because of prestige, because of a particular position, maybe I'm a preacher, if I tell you I'm upset, I'm worried, you will never believe that. But the fact, let's face the reality, please, all of us are human beings, and naturally there are areas that we fear and get worried and anxious, even the best of people, that is a reality, we cannot deny that. How come you're a preacher, How are you? why are you worried? That is not the question, because it happens. Shall we say praise the Lord together, praise the Lord. So don't deny, some of us deny the reality and you know, try to be over that. No, it cannot be. The first thing for healing, I accept. I have fears, I have anxieties, which maybe I have not expressed, or for which I have not found a solution maybe, that's all. But the reality concerning several areas of my life and relationship and whatnot, I'm afraid and I'm very, very cautious about that even. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me mention something else together with that. Then we progress, you know, slowly. You know, when people go for Bible studies and Bible understanding, I've come to know some of them, they say, they said one of the things they are taught this, what is that? One way to understand the message of the Bible, one of the ways, there are several ways, one of the, because meditation and whatnot, when you read, they tell you, you know, notice or keep a note of the words repeated. Another one is the amount of space occupied. Have, let me explain this to you, then we will understand. Suppose there's a president of India over here. You will know the importance of a person more than the designation, you know, by the space he occupies. When I say it's not because he's bulky, if there's a president of India, it will be cordoned off. Only security forces, you cannot be here. So there is a barricade, then empty space, then again security officials, then the public. So imagine the amount of space that you occupy, not but he personally occupies, because of the importance of the person, naturally there is a space given so that that importance is kept. A way to understand in a very simple way. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So they say, the amount of space given to something will make you understand the importance of that. The amount of space given will make you understand the importance of that. Another example they use is, for example, in the newspaper. If there are several columns for a particular news, maybe five or six columns in the front page, that is more important than any other news with a small one column. I hope you understood. Yes or no? So in the newspaper, you have several columns on the page. So one particular news has got you know, five or six or ten columns and half the page is occupying, occupying half the page or full page. That means that is something very important. Rather than any other news item, that has got only one small column. Oh, that was in a small column. And you say, oh, that's not important. But it's in a big column and columns are given, which would mean the amount of space given will tell you there is something very important. So that rule or that fact or that way of analyzing is actually applied to the Bible. In what way? The amount of space occupied regarding something, regarding dealing with something and talking about a subject, maybe one chapter, two chapters, three chapters, or thousand words or two thousand words. So the amount of words or amount of, you know, paragraphs, amount of, you know, chapters, a lot of that. I'll give a simple example, some of you would know. For example, you know, the book of Genesis. 1 to 10, all about a creation, fall, and everything is over. Whereas from 10 or 11 to 50, so 11 to 50 are more in number than 1 to 10. You will know that. So 1 to 10, all about creation and fall and flood and everything is over with that. 
Whereas from 11 to 50, if you take those chapters, it is not to make us go through the you know, analysis, but to give an example, 11 to 50 is all about people. Abraham and you know, all those. So people are more important than any other thing. So importance is given to people. So you will know that from 11 to 50, you know, it's all talking about persons, people of God, and certain personalities, which would mean people are more important, the community is more important than the rest of it. So the amount of space given. If that is understood, there is something we need to know. May I use one more example? In Psalm number 118, they will tell you, can you count the number of times the repetition comes, his mercy endures forever, his mercy endures forever, his mercy, almost 28 times it comes repeated, one after another. So people are, why that? Let me explain this to you in the beginning. There's a purpose. And the purpose, they say, is in a simple way to make us understand is this. So for example, in Psalm number 118, if it is said his, after each words, his mercy endures forever. Then after another words, his mercy endures forever. Why that repetition? And they say, you don't have to know anything else except the fact, whatever be your life, you don't have to know anything else except the fact that his mercy endures forever. So that message may come to you, there is a repetition. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. May I use another example? Maybe, you know, I spoke in a different way, therefore it could be confusing. May I put in a different way? Suppose something happened near the hall there, I mean near the father's office there, and you're interested in knowing that. Brother, what is happening there? Nothing. Brother, you know, they were standing there and talking to father and some noise, nothing. Brother, you know, just a while ago before you came for, we came for the service and before we came for praise and worship, as we were coming down, a lot of people standing there making some noise. What is that? Nothing. Brother, you know, one man was shouting and, you know, yelling and then, you know, he walked out, maybe he was drunk, he was mad, maybe. What was that actually? You know, you saw that? Nothing. So to everything that I say nothing, you know, what does it mean? You don't have to know anything. You just go back to your hall, that's all. I hope you understood the example. Yes or no? So there are times you don't have to be worried about anything except the fact that the Lord wants to convey to you. That's far more important than your dwelling in the worry. So therefore repetition and you know the amount of space occupied will tell you the importance of a particular subject that we are having or we are facing. If this is the fact, we are coming to something. You know, you'll be surprised or all of us will be surprised, you know. One phrase in the Bible, more than 665 times. I use that word 665 days, you know why? We have 365 days, but almost 600 or even more. I have not got the exact number, but roughly more than 600 times or even repeatedly. I mean to say, you know, on and often, the phrase that comes most is, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. Which would mean, God has considered that as something affecting us in our daily life. Are you listening? See the connection, the logically. Something that affects you, he, he, he addresses it. Please understand, I do not want a God who is silent to what I am going through. Silence is very painful, all of us know. Uh, we have shared that very often. Um, you tell me I'm in trouble, I listen to that. You know, I got pain in my leg, and I can't move now, my children are waiting for me, or what you say, a number of things. I'm very silent. Silence is very killing and very painful. All of us know in our family or in community, that's why sometimes we shout at each other, the wife or the husband or husband or the wife, tell something. Even if you're angry, tell me you're angry. Even there is a communication. Even in that, that's why sometimes people say, you know, I'm getting angry, let it be. Because that will keep up the communication. There are saints who are angry. There are saints who are really fed up. Lord, I'm fed up and what not. But silence is more killing. Suppose you're silent to all that I say, I said, I have difficulty, I got a headache, I got a problem, you know, uh, I feel upset now, there is something in my stomach now, uh, I want to sit down, but you're silent. None of you, no one in this community gets up and tells me, brother, shall we call father, shall we call a doctor? Okay, take rest now, we will ask the music ministers to continue the singing. You're totally silent. And that silence kill, kill all of us. What are we trying to say, what are we sharing? Therefore, wherever I go, 
in whichever place i am in whatever activity in which i am involved in deep within me the anxiety and fear i carry it remember or oh, imagine my god has nothing to say nothing to address to that and that's very painful so please understand that's the reason something really affecting us more than anything is maybe the anxiety and fear he addresses it so constantly do not fear i am with you i'll be with you in times of your trouble i am with you peace be with you he when we entered you know disciples were really frightened the upper room the first thing he said peace be with you let the fear be come come down so please accept this reality that's quite important shall we raise our hands and praise god together hallelujah shall we together hallelujah 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 praise the lord praise the lord and do not ever pretend including me that we don't have fear now maybe we don't share with the others maybe deeper than i remember a particular it's not mine because uh, you know i remember listening to fulton jeshin once he said a young girl you know <laughs> went to the school and when she went to the school that particular day there were no class there was no class so instead of that the teacher made them sit together and made them share their worry or fear so all of them began to say one said i am afraid of snake other one said i am afraid of spider other one said i am afraid of fire another one said i am afraid of bomb blast another one said i am afraid of you know ants i am afraid of uh, you know cockroaches i am afraid of a snake i am afraid of a dog i am afraid of a donkey i am afraid of a horse i am afraid of you know a road i am afraid of so many things everyone shared that and this particular girl came back home and then in the evening the girl asked his father dad are you afraid of snakes no are you afraid of cockroaches no are you afraid of lions no my child are you afraid of you know poisonous cobra no are you afraid with the mosquito that bites you and it can cause you know dengue and what no are you afraid of deep waters in the sea no are you afraid of a cliff no nothing then the child said i understand you are not afraid of anything but mama okay okay i've understood the very simple expression i understand you are not afraid of anything but mama that means see you know the the commentary is that no something in the other makes us worried and fear that's the only thing that is not to be taken seriously but just in the humorous line anyway dear brothers and sisters what exactly is fear is it good or bad please there are both sides to that do not misunderstand therefore when you see a fear 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 everything is bad no actually fear is an emotion you know that when we face something that causes danger or appears to be dangerous or someone also suppose i meet a terrorist with a point gun not i'll be afraid someone wants to hit me i will run so the fear actually is good in this context and in this context because it actually makes you cautious and makes you fit for your survival you're afraid because tomorrow if you spend money so much you know you will lose money because a lot of you know uh, problem there therefore you are afraid therefore you are strict you don't spend lavishly so be very careful so carefulness cautiousness and what not naturally is a positive side of fear that should be there but we are not talking about that we are talking about a fear that destroys us a fear that really takes the very self itself and goes to ruin shall we say praise the lord together praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord and may i say it works that's more important fear works in two ways one in the self and then outside and when we say work in the self you'll we'll say oh, we know that that is not the thing you'll be surprised i am really surprised when i listened to few reflections of fulton jinme shared that with you very strange usually when i say fear i get tensed you know my face become you know maybe i perspire and then i don't want to do anything i recoil that is not the thing there are certain effects of fear which we may not connect normally which we may not think that is the fact and that's what we are coming to and what is that you would be surprised one effect of fear on the self is yes, one effect one of the effects not one effect one of the effects of fear on the self is the fact you know what is that actually you know laziness 
Please understand this. Not every laziness. It's very interesting, know that. That's why we share this. You say, you're lazy, you're lazy. My husband is lazy. Wife is lazy. These people are lazy. It's very easy to turn that to laziness. But sometimes, I don't say always, sometimes as they have analyzed, understood, shared and experienced, it is not simply, you know, uh, something, you know, up in the above, some theory. It is not a theory. Out of experience of people who have met each other, people have really been empathetic and sympathetic towards the need of the people and have talked over and shared over from that. So it is not some theory, you know, just, you know, some reflection I wrote, okay, laziness. No, it is from the result of all these things as people have met, doctors have met, psychiatrists have met, psychologists have met, spiritual fathers have met, spiritual you know, saints have met people. So in some totality, they have understood one effect of fear that caused on the self is laziness because you do not want to face anything. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. There are people who don't want to go for work because they're afraid of work. Because work will demand many things get up in time and maybe have to forego many things. Maybe you have to face the man who is the taskmaster. Maybe sometimes it goes wrong, you have to, uh, you have to face his admonition. So I don't want to face that. So I want to keep my comfort zone and therefore I do not want to face that because it makes you worried and anxious. Therefore avoiding that, therefore you become lazy. And that can grow in us. Actually, the root cause is a fear and you cannot, you don't want to face these people and you feel upset about it. Shall we raise our hands and praise God together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember once, I did not know, it is not connection with this, but to you know, have a sense of relaxation. There was a once a program organized to give award for laziest people. Okay. And a big meeting and big gathering. And then during the meeting, several awards were given for talented people, the most skilled people, and you know, other things. And one of them was this, you know, an award for the laziest man in that country or maybe in that community. So people were gathered, and then the time came for this award to be announced, or certain, I mean this uh, to be given. And from the podium they announced, now we have the next you know item where we will announce the award for the most laziest person, the laziest person in our country, in our community. And the big, you know, trophy and whatnot and cash award. So they announced the name and they said, please come forward and to receive this award from the chief guest. They announced the name three times, yet nothing happened, no one even came. And then the fourth time they announced the name with the details. And this particular person who was awarded this was right at the back. Sitting right at the back and maybe leaned onto a chair and practically very relaxed. So when it was announced the, next, the, the final time that he should come up, or it would be a humiliation for the chief guest even and for the organizers, he shouted from there, if possible, if you could come up to this place and put that cash award into my pocket, I'd be so happy. <laughs> okay. I nobody understood that. Not even to move the hand, not even to walk, you know, it makes an effort. Meaning to say, the very comfort zone, when that is disturbed, you know, we don't feel all right. Therefore, sometimes it's a fear or some inner fear that restricts you and recoils you so that you become tend to be lazy. It can happen that way. So if that is the problem after the inner person, we are talking about inner healing, after the please open it up before the Lord. And in the name and the power of the Lord, confront reality and face it. And that's how God's grace shall be with us. Shall we raise our hands and praise God together? Hallelujah. 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 Shall we praise God together? Hallelujah. More than what I say, let the Spirit of God make us understand it. That's more important. My words could be limited. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. The next effect would be surprised. Now, as I told you, you know, earlier we said trembling, fear, and you know. So one is laziness. Not every laziness, say, please. Second one, you live in a fantasy world. Wild fantasy and what are imaginary, you know, hyper-realistic. Which would mean, you know, you tend to think in a highly idealistic way and you never come to the reality. It can be also part of fear because you know that when you face a reality, lot of things are demanded of you. Your time, your availability, 
your hard work and the what effort that you must make so in order to avoid that you know you go into fantasy imaginary world and become in, in boastful even so it can happen that way you will be surprised when they have analyzed people we are talking in different line when they analyze people why are they living in fantasy not the artist because that's for creativity but if not for creativity people who live in there while you know building castles there it's because you know they are afraid they don't have the finance i don't have the finance that's why always put a reason i don't have this so that's why so all the reasons will come like an avalanche and hold them they will never come out of that and people have come out of that in a bold way that's a different one they are able to confront that in confrontation you know they have a tussle and bustle and what they come out but others just you know avoid that so in wild fantasy in wild imagination they go into that that's also a problem and you know it can be a problem as we said the root cause could be the fear within you afraid of make effort you feel i cannot make the effort you feel you are not conscious so many things work together and at that moment every reason will come to you so that to restrict you shall we raise our hands and praise god together hallelujah hallelujah i do not know whether you know it is only to mention something you know simple one lady was so upset someone told her you are very proud and she not believe that and one day you know she wanted to meet a doctor a psychiatrist and a psychologist and then she got the appointment told the doctor doctor now i've realized i have a problem that affects me and what is that i believe that can destroy me what is that i feel i am very proud what makes you say that what makes you say that you know every morning when i look at the mirror i feel i am the most beautiful woman in the world and i go about in that manner every way because i feel i am beautiful and i hold myself you know whenever i go for a meeting or meet people in that you know feeling i am very beautiful so i think i am very proud isn't it so what's the remedy the doctor said it is not a pride it's purely imagination are you following me it is not a pride at all it is simply your imagination meaning to say imagination takes a different realm and they be what we are afraid of what will others think if i am not beautiful what will others think that if i am accepted when i go to a particular function others have the you know the tone of the color and skin what therefore it the fear of that we don't call fear maybe anxiety of that not really shown outside the example that i share is very limited it can apply to anything i i i have experienced people when they go for a meeting uh you know they don't want to go you know why oh, all those people are very rich i have nothing to contribute see that you might consider very silly but i hope it can affect when i share the example it can really come to the reality when i know one particular person very talented and you know um very good in many ways but will not go for a meeting I, I, for some meeting when i say some meeting in a particular context he would always some excuses and finally they found out what was that all those who come for the meeting are extremely rich and he is not rich enough therefore their conversation is all about the latest car the porsche car or suv what not and the estate they bought and the the, the type of building they have altered and the new t- technology used in construction building and the uh, interior decoration this man has nothing to contribute so the feeling i have nothing to contribute when people have conversation that are high fly i am a simple man i have nothing to contribute so when i have nothing to contribute or even give a suggestion they will not tell you anything because what's the use of talking to you because you don't know the latest car you don't know the mechanism of that you don't know how much money is involved so it's all belong to different them therefore you have to be there you know in a way that you are really subdued and therefore that makes you under you know terrible feeling so you might say that's a complex eh? but then it's out of fear i have nothing to contribute what will they think of me they think i'm so it's better to avoid that let them only see my talent and they appreciate that but let them not talk about anything else where i cannot involve so therefore i go into fantasy there i can go to wild imagine say i have this and that that can cause a problem too shall we say praise the lord together praise the lord hallelujah again let me come back more than seeing the other way it can be the fit of fear as you said underlying shall we raise our hands and praise god together hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord next effect they say is lie telling lie to cover up because you are afraid you would be exposed 
and being exposed they will not accept you as you are or understand you as you are but they condemn you they humiliate you therefore to avoid that you tell a lie in fact very many lies that you know children tell is oh, because they are afraid they are caught because it's a simple way to be caught but more than being caught maybe the dad will punish me dad will listen therefore they cover it up a simple way to understand i am reminded of a particular incident you know it is nothing connected with that but then you know where a mother scolded the child for telling a lie and what was the incident their neighborhood all the children her companions had some sort of a pet parrot or some birds or maybe a cat may be beautiful you know dog and what not so she longed for that she could not have so one day somehow someone presented her with a beautiful puppy a dog a good dog good breed and then you know just go around saying that i too have a puppy does not you know bring any any glory because all of them all of them have it so what did she do she did not bring the puppy outside in public but she went and told all her companions someone gave me a lion i got a lion at home and we have enclosed it you know very strictly and with the doors and you know iron bars and what not got a lion and mummy heard that and the companions asked the mother of this child hey aunty someone gave your daughter a lion lion yeah she told us when she came to the class she told us you know she was given a lion and then you know the mother called her person and said all that you received was a puppy isn't it so why do you go around telling it is a lion and then you know mummy told her you do one thing you are told a lie you better make up for that i am not telling you to go and tell everyone it is not a lion but at least you know kneel down before god and say lord i am sorry i told a lie say that that's the first starting point so that you'll be free from such tension and what not you will never repeat that so the child said i will do that child went before the picture of jesus and you know prayed something when she came out the mother asked her did you really say sorry to jesus to the lord i did what did you say i said i'm sorry that i told a lie that i got a lion and i told that the others and i'm sorry for that whereas it was a puppy and then oh then god told me something very interesting what is that god told me when i said that even he sometimes finds it very difficult to identify puppy and lion i don't know i understood that no? <laughs> meaning to say there's a comment underneath even in that situation we still want to keep up you know that covering the thing so that you know you hold on to that because you're still afraid what if others will come to know and cause problems so a lot of things you must get into the depth of it eh? i just casually said but it can apply to many things that we do shall we raise our hands and praise god together hallelujah 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 now i do not know whether it be a surprise usually when we talk about fear we think in a different way but actually this can be the effects of fear working on the self and destroying us so if that is they presented before the lord for his healing touch but he can handle that not everybody else shall we say praise the lord together praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah because we cannot go into the detail of that because it is connected in a in a in a self dear brothers and sisters having said this let us know what the lord did very whenever as he said danger of fear maybe nothing in the desert a cause for a fear caught between the red sea and the pharaoh army danger facing an enemy danger maybe caught in adultery the woman danger i mean to say everyone will punish her so a lot of things in the bible i just picked up some of them please understand in all these situations please we will find god intervening do not be afraid do not be afraid i am with you and he led them that is the reason the other day when we were said be still opposite of you know that uh, you know, fear is not courage all of us know that very many times it has been told in the catholic church opposite of fear is not as we study like antonym no courage no it is not that opposite of fear is faith that's why jesus called the disciples you men of little faith 
So don't you think that I am in control? Please, I need to be in constant fear if I do not trust that God is in control. This is a fact. It's a fact. Let me tell you a very stupid example maybe. You can really understand that because now we are far advanced in studies and knowledge because of the world is such more than the past. Our grandparents, great-grandparents, you know, they were not exposed to so much of understanding as we are today. I will agree that. They were not educated as we are today. They are not exposed to, you know, crisis management, disaster management as we are today. There are a lot of system, disaster management, crisis management, what not. They were not. But yet, they were far better to handle a tragedy than us. I hope you will believe that. Yes or no? Fact. If you really understand our grandparents, the way they handled it, it's all because of trust and faith. And the fear is taken away. Something that we need to understand today with all the system of you know, management, we are still under fear. Yes. It's true. We may not believe it now, but the fact is that those who teach about crisis management are the ones who really get thoroughly upset when the crisis comes. The most intelligent people today are more frustrated than ordinary men. Yes. The ordinary man on the street with all the mosquitoes coming onto his face and what he sleeps snoring away, whereas in the best of them I cannot sleep. See that? See the difference? See the difference? I don't know, I, I'm repeating the, sometimes what I said. I've seen sometimes, and I I mean, not sometimes, an incident when I traveled in a train, an elderly person sitting next to me when the train came to a halt at a particular station, you know, just tapped on my shoulder and said, look out through the window. I looked out. The train had come to halt in an in a out station. That means out of the station in a wilderness area maybe. No, no shop, nothing. It's almost like a forest. But something could be seen. Just two, sorry, four twigs. I repeat, maybe some of you some would have heard this. Four twigs, that's all. Four twigs of a tree planted in the, in the, in the ground. Over that, sackcloth spread over. That is the palatial house of a family. That's the palatial house, inverted commas, of a family. And then, under that, there is a father, there is a mother and two kids. And the mother happened to say something very funny. And the father could not control the laughter. My giggling and you know what, could not control, you know, ha 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 and what not. And then he pinches the face of the wife because could not control the laughter. Then he pushes her and the wife could not control the laughter, ha ha. And then she pushes the husband, seeing that the children could not control. And they go over the board, I mean, they climb over the head and what not. All cuddle each other and what not, uh, like worms and enjoying themselves. That was a scene. And this man tapped on my shoulder, told me, they don't have bank balance. They don't have any WhatsApp likes. They don't have any Twitter. They don't have any other, you know, fans following them. They don't have anything. They have nothing for tomorrow. Yet, heart is free from all worry and anxiety. What the world cannot give, they have it. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to know this. And that's why fear, when we say that, if God is not control, then I need to be fear. But the trust is that is, God takes control. May I come back to the incident, I mean, the particular thing that I wanted to mention. I have in my childhood has seen that memory comes back to me. You know, grandfather is not my grandfather. Maybe lightning struck, heavy rains, or maybe some landslide. Or maybe a big, huge tree fell onto the house and the house got completely destroyed, came crashing down. And, you know, they come out in panic and the elderly man, the grandfather, not educated, not being into any theological studies, not into philosophy, not into any training, absolutely not training, not even to the school. Doesn't know how to read and write even. And very elderly. He comes out and looks at the entire scene and makes one statement. That one statement contains all that he's going through. And what's the statement? It is an ordinary statement, very powerful statement, but very ordinary. I put it the other way. Very powerful statement, but sounds ordinary. He looks at the entire scene, maybe the tree fallen down, the tiles broken, windows gone, and the floor crashed, and you know, then what to do, vessels gone and whatnot. And he looks at that said nothing happens without the knowledge of the one above 
After that, what? Sitting down crying? No, no, come on, no, you move that side now. You move that side. Don't worry, you move that side now. Take care of you now. Drink water now. Don't get panic now. Drink there. Okay, you go to the other house now. Okay, move there. Next into action, a response to the situation in a very positive way, which perhaps we cannot do. And the basis, the root cause is that the heart is rooted and grounded in the trust of the Lord, in, in trust. That's what today we are losing it. We trust many things when it comes to God and His promise we cannot trust. That's what the Bible says, This is my comfort in my distress. This is my comfort where? Not when things are alright. In my distress, precisely where I'm in distress, this is my comfort. What is that? Your promises. Your promises, O Lord, revive me. And the promises when you take, be calm, do not be afraid, I am with you. Shall we raise our hands and praise God together? Hallelujah. Together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember, you know, earlier, you know, we mentioned when people used to be told, no, in anxiety, pray that you feel the love, with the love of God. You know the connection now. Where there is love, there is no fear. He who is in fear is not perfect in love. All come to this fact. Actually, it comes to this fact. But now, may I take a simple passage which some of you would know, then we pray with that and conclude with that. Before that, shall we raise our hands and praise God together. Hallelujah. Keep your hands raised up. A very familiar passage, but let's see it in a different angle. And if that encourages us, if that makes us really, you know, comfortable to be enjoying the power and love of God, let it be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I've shared the same thing with the youth day, but then let me share that with you. Before I explain or go into the passage, I need to, not because I know, I feel I must give an explanation. I hope be patient with me. Nothing very, very fantastic, very ordinary. Suppose, maybe earlier some of you would have heard this, I hope you'll excuse me. Suppose the entire place is dark. Entire place is dark. Did I mention this to you? No. Entire place is dark. Can't see anything. Pitch darkness. Totally dark. And I walked onto the stage. I'm not familiar. I, totally dark. So I just walked. And when I came to this particular spot, coil of wire, I did not know. I can't see. I stamped on that. I felt something very soft. I screamed and yelled. Please understand, the screaming, yelling out of fright came after touching, not before. Because when I touched, knowingly or unknowingly, unexpectedly, because I can't see anything, I got frightened of why, because did I touch a snake? Maybe there was a snake. I felt something very soft and like a coil. And maybe uh, maybe snake was lying down, maybe thank God not bite me. What, what did I screamed? It's only after having happened something, not before. Okay, that's one thing. The second, it is not very bright. I can see, but in a vague manner. Not very clearly, you know, I can see, but not very clear. Please, I hope you'll mark the word. I can see something, but not very clear. Can't make sure what that is. Cannot make sure what that is with my sight. Because light is not sufficient, light is not bright. Therefore, what happens? I just came to the stage and as I reached here, I looked there, I can see something, but I see something, you know, in white and black color, coiled there. And since it is not clear, since it is not clear, naturally a misunderstanding can work. Or a doubt, or uncertainty. What is that? Is it a snake or a wire? Is it a snake or a rope? Maybe the snake is lying down there. I am already frightened before even I touch that. Are you listening? Are you listening? See the two ways. May I take another example? I love to say that. Maybe I am in my bedroom, sleeping away, snoring away, and everything is very, very dark. Nothing can be seen. It's called pitch darkness. And through the window, someone puts a hand and then snatches, maybe if I have a chain, snatches it away. So when I feel the pull and maybe the touch of his hand, then I wake up, get frightened. See that? It's only after I felt the touch, after the pull that I realized. 
I got frightened, not before, otherwise it's not away. But now I felt a hand coming towards my shoulder or my neck and I feel a pull, something is being you know, done, then I get frightened. Okay. The other one. Imagine it is not very dark, but I can't see properly. And there is a branch of a tree with no leaves, like a hand, maybe like this. Branch of a tree, just outside. And the shade of that is coming under the window. So, when the wind comes, it, the shade comes this way and goes back. Are you following me? Are you following me? Now, I woke up and I saw that. But the problem is that I'm not sure, my... I already get frightened. Maybe someone is put in the hand and he is slowly pulling it back. Can't make sure. Someone is hiding there. So, the way the mind works, not sure. At that time, I don't think it's a branch of a tree because of shade. Nothing. Nothing will work at that moment. The mind becomes so, you know, confused and, you know, blank. You don't think logically. Emotions work. My goodness, someone, someone is putting the hand now, he is putting it now. If I shout, what happens? If I cannot get up, if I get up, he might come straight away attacking me, throw something. If I am frightened already. Please understand this reality when we come to this passage. Then we shall go through that. Before that, shall we once again raise our hands and praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 22 onwards. Just listen in a different way so that, you know, let something which God can reveal be revealed to us. Are you ready? Are you ready? Not a good response. Are you ready? Not for me so that something good shall be realized within our heart. Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. What did he do before that? He dispersed the crowd. He was with the crowd, he dispersed them. And even the disciples, he dispersed them. And he went up to the mountain to pray. After prayer, he came down. Follow every, the sequence. The sequence. After prayer, he came down. But the time was fourth watch of the night. Fourth watch of the night. Which would mean roughly very early in the morning. And all of us know from experience, very early in the morning, maybe you're going to the church, maybe, maybe you're moving in the, on the road, you cannot make out. Maybe someone is coming with a jacket, you're not sure it's a girl or a boy, you're not sure it's a man or somebody else is moving that way or standing there. Sometimes, you know, you cannot make sure, you know that very well. I'm sure some of your experience, maybe early in the morning, you know, something is maybe vehicle is there, it's coming this way or going that way, some red light is seen, so it could be going that way, the, maybe coming against you. Not sure. Because things are not sure, that's the only thing that I want to say. So there's a time you cannot be sure, because the visibility is very poor, so we are not sure what is happening. As I told you, the shade is coming, actually I mistake to be a man put in the hand. So, please understand the time, the fourth watch of the night and the sun has not become very bright over the land, rather it is now looking rather, you know, you know, dull and the light is not bright enough to make sure what that is or make sure what is and therefore it is in that time or at that time, the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came down to the seashore from the mountain and the boat had a distance beaten by the waves. The boat had distance beaten by the waves. So what did he do? Naturally, Jesus, because he is powerful enough, he walked on the water. Are you listening? No. Are you listening? He walked on the water. You can imagine what will happen to those on the other side. Natural. See what the Bible says. The disciple who are on the other side mistook him. Mistook him for a ghost and got frightened. See that? Mistook him for a ghost because they can't see properly. The time is such that naturally they don't expect that something is moving which is not, uh, uh, which is beyond their imagination even. They never even think of that but they're not sure. They can't make out also. Light is not sufficient enough who is what and who is who and what is what. Therefore, they mistook him for a ghost. And got frightened. And when they got frightened, naturally, they yelled and cried maybe. See, the way it comes. Mistaken idea about suffering. Mistaken idea about happiness. Mistaken idea about prosperity can cause a lot of fear. Unless I have this, 
things are gone. My child failed the exam, oh, the future is gone. My husband, you know, uh, what happened this one, oh, our life is gone. And therefore, we cone ourselves in terrible fear. Need not be. I have no, you know, my words are limited. Mistaken. They mistook him for a ghost and got frightened. Now, I want you to listen next. That is more beautiful. When the disciple got frightened, what happened? When the disciple got frightened, Jesus spoke to them immediately. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. Please, why did I say this? Believe. When you say, Lord, I trust in you, sometimes it can be in the areas of fear and anxiety, God has something to speak to you so that your fear comes down. Believe that. Shall we raise our hands and praise God together? Hallelujah. 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 That's why this is my comfort in my distress. Your promises, which I read, which I listen, gives me comfort, revives me. So that's the connection, the fear and God's word. And that's where God speaks. God gives a word. That's how the mother comforts, no? Oh, child, don't worry, I lost a chocolate. Don't worry, I'll give another one. Promise is there. Uh, oh, oh, my, oh, that is your uncle, you know? Why you are you afraid of him, no? See, a word comes so that the fear is taken away. That's why he ended the upper room and said, peace be with you. A word comes. Be still. Word comes. Please understand this. That's why the number of times spoken, do not be afraid. That's the reason too. So when they got frightened, Jesus spoke to them immediately. Fear not, it is I. For some of us, the word is like, fear not is I. What is the big thing? Oh, fear not is I. Please, there is a meaning to that. Fear not is I would mean Jesus revealed himself to them. And they were all right. If I don't reveal... Suppose I come near you and I, if I don't reveal that I have come to help you, you'll be frightened. Who is this man standing next to me? So revelation, revelation, that's not the book of revelation. That's why people pray when they are really upset. Lord, reveal your love. Lord, reveal your promise. Reveal your power. Reveal your love, reveal your power. And here he revealed himself. And the next is something very interesting. I love that. Or if it is you, if it is you, let me also walk like you over the water. And that is a confidence in prayer. You know why? Water is a problem. Waves are a problem. And therefore, let me walk over the problem, not under the problem. You are walking over the sea that is very rough and, you know, and you know, raging. My goodness, something fantastic. I want to be that way too. Give me that grace. Very often I am under the problem. I am really engulfed in the problem. I am really struggling. No, give me the grace. Need not the problem. Please understand. Sometimes the miracle is not that the problem is solved completely. If you are waiting for that miracle to happen. Sometimes the miracle can be. Yes, sometimes the miracle in life can be. More than, you know, the sea becoming calm. More than the water becomes still. You are able to walk over the raging water. Are you listening? Are you listening? So there is a situation, it could be, it may not be resolved now, it cannot be managed, yes, but you are given the grace to walk over that, not submerged by that. So that's where the fear is overcome, you are able to, because you listen to God's word and take into that. Let's raise our hands and praise God together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up, dear brothers and sisters. Shall we raise our hands? If not for you personally, May I ask you, maybe in your family, maybe others, when they come to you with a lot of anxiety and fear, may you be in a position to comfort them as well because you believe in what the Lord said. Let us praise God together. Hallelujah. Remember, it is not any high studies or maybe qualification in many ways. The antidote to fear and anxiety is the trust that I place in the Almighty, in the All-Powerful, who has a way to direct and govern everything. Therefore, when I subject myself to a higher wisdom, my life shall be redesigned, redesigned for something better. And that is a reality. Shall we say this simple word, Lord, I trust in you. 
Lord, I trust in you. Lord, I trust in you. Hallelujah. Remember when things are all right and comfortable, it's easy. But precisely where I struggle, Lord, I declare the truth and the truth shall set me free. Let's say it together. Lord, I trust in you. Lord, I trust in you. Close your eyes. Think of your family, your father, your mother, your children, your husband, your wife, and concerning them, concerning them and the way they are and the way they are now, there could be a lot of anxiety and fear working in our hearts. Keeping that within us will not bring a healing, we know that. It has to be subjected to the one who will take control over that. And that is the Lord who said, do not fear. Lord, I leave everything to you, abandon myself to you. Let your wisdom work over the situation. And I pray, Lord, fill me with your love so that in your love, the fear is taken away. And I trust in you. Let us praise God together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.